All right, hi again, and welcome back to Attorney Steve Contracts College. Okay, so we get a lot of people asking me a lot of things on Facebook, a lot of questions on YouTube, people calling saying, how do I get out of my lease? I am like stuck. I'm not making any business. I have a three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 month rental payment on a residential or commercial property. Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard and find out one way that you may be able to get out of your contract. So let's head on over to our contracts college up here, okay? So I'm going to tell you about the, Cal this is California law. Check the law in your state. Every state is different, of course. This is general legal information only, not legal advice, okay? So, um, but this is the case of Lloyd versus Murphy. This is a case that worked its way up to the California Supreme Court in 1944. This was back in World War II, kind of some unprecedented times back then. In unprecedented times right now with this coronavirus, COVID-19, aka China virus. So it's called all kinds of things. So here we have a case. Back then we had in, in June of, of 1940, we had the National Defense Act, okay? So this act was already in place. It was an act of Congress, a federal law, and it was already in place. But the parties, Lloyd and Murphy, despite that, entered into a contract. A few months later, as you can see, um, but a little bit over a year later, about 14 months later, they entered into a contract to, as I have here, selling, servicing new cars. There were some, uh, a few exceptions for used cars, repairs, and gas. So the parties entered into a contract for you property law students out there that creates what type of interest? A leasehold interest that creates a leasehold interest. And in general, you know, when you lease the property, Generally, it's yours. So a, a lot of courts will say, hey, you know what? You leased it. You assume the risk. You assume the risks of the good times and the bad, okay? But here's what happened. So obviously, they entered into contract. So there were certain things that they assumed that the property would be um, usable for that purpose. There are certain, as I put over here, certain presupposed conditions that parties have when they enter into a contract. So here they entered into this contract, and here we go from 8441 right up here. What's that? A few months later, three, four months later, all of a sudden, under the act, they restrict the sales. Uh, first of all, they prohibited the sales, and then they amended it to say, we can restrict the sale of new, new vehicles to military vehicles only. Okay, so there was a prohibition or a restriction on selling the new cars. And so the party to the contract said, well, you know what? This is how I make my money. I sell new cars. What's going on here? This contract, I want out. I want out. So the real question is, can you get out? Can you get out? Now, a lot of companies are going through this right now with the COVID, big company, small company, retail companies, restaurants. A lot of restaurants can't pay the bills right now, okay? Um, in fact, you, I was just watching the other day on the news with um, – Louisiana, darn a Mardi Gras area. There's like these companies are used to making, uh, you know, thousands and thousands, if not millions of dollars. And you go and there's the takeout only. You know, that, that's going to be tough to stay in business. A lot of people are laying people off. When you lay people off, you don't have people working for you, don't raise the revenues. Okay. So it sucks for everybody. So he wants out. He says, I can't sell the cars anymore. Landlord says, Well, wait a second. You can still service cars, you can still repair cars. You can still sell gas, hey, and I'll even let you do other things if you want. Just let me know. So tenant says, no, nah, I want out. I want out. Question is, can he get out? Okay. This is the doctrine of frustration of purpose, okay? If you go to law school, you're going to find this. A lot of people are brushing up now. Most of the smart people are coming to Attorney Steve Contracts College, okay? I don't want to brag, but I did Amjur. I got the top grade in contracts law. I don't want to brag, but sometimes you have to toot your own horn. Anyway, so he comes back, World War II restricts it, and the doctrine of frustration of purpose was raised and went up to the California Supreme Court, and I'm going to post down here, I'm going to post some case law in the message section, the description section down here, so make sure you check that out. It's going to have some good case law for you, okay, if you need to cite it or you want to read up on some further cases, okay? So... He says, now, let's talk about it. So he wants out of the contract. Landlord says, no, I'm not letting you out. And eventually, he, fought, he sends his notice of repudiation. There's your, there's your contract word of the day. It just feels good to say that. Repudiation. 
repudiation. Say that. Just say, just rolls off your tongue. Feels good. That means to cancel or terminate your contract. So he, the tenant did it first orally and then followed up in writing and then said, okay, I hope it works. Landlord said, no, I'm filing a motion. Well, first of all, the landlord followed his duty to mitigate, duty to mitigate, because you can't collect damages that you don't mitigate. He went out and he did find a new tenant, which is the duty. And, but however, there was some unpaid rent and, and landlord said, you know what, you're paying that rent. You're paying that rent, okay? So the doctrine of frustration of purpose, I want you to realize this is very limited, okay? Very limited. The courts in very few limited circumstances want to actually let you out of your contract, okay? A lot of times you're assumed to, uh, to um, assume the risk that, it, you know, just because you're making less money now, just because you were making 50000 a month, now you're making 2000 a month because of the coronavirus, a lot of courts are probably going to say, yeah, you know, things happen and you take the risk, right? But the doctrine of frustration of purpose is a recognized doctrine. I have it up here. Okay, now, but there's some very strict rules, like, to try to get this to actually work in a court case. Um, by the way, we do offer low-cost consultations to review your contracts, let you know where you stand, and also, if you need to work out, do commercial loan workouts. But take a look at this. First of all, it requires... Let me switch my color up here so you can follow me. <coughs> Unforeseeable risk. So if the f risk was foreseeable, like they said here in the Lloyd versus Murphy case, it was foreseeable. We were kind of in war times. Like you didn't know this. You didn't know that maybe they would stop selling vehicles. Now you can argue these things. You know, lawyers do. They get paid to go to court and argue these things. But it was foreseeable. So it can't be a foreseeable risk. Now, many times now we can probably say COVID virus. I mean, who, who anticipated a global pandemic right after you enter into lease? So that's something that's probably going to be argued. We'll see how it turns out. Presupposed conditions turn out to be false. Um, you thought that, the, you know, that you were going to be able to legally use your unit. Then they pass a law that says, uh, you know, selling guns is now illegal. So now you got to shut down your shop. Okay, now that would be raise a Second Amendment issue, don't get me wrong. But things that you presuppose turn out to be false, that's going to help your case. Um, your lease has no value. Okay, so really uh, the, the crux of this is you want to be able to go to court and say, Judge, my lease has absolutely no value whatsoever. I can't do this. I can't do that. It's impossible. I can't make much money anymore, like, like nothing. So there has to be a severe... Um, Lack of value in the return performance, okay? So again, it, this is not going to work in every case. I don't want people to get excited and go, frustration of purpose. I saw it on Attorney Steve's channel, Contracts College. No, it's going to be very limited. Now, for example, let me switch here. No, I'll stay here. Sublease, if, you can, if your contract contemplates subleasing rights, that's a little value. You can go sublease, go find another party. Now, it's a lot of work. It's not going to be easy, but there, there's still value in your leasehold interest, okay? So that may, that may hurt your claim if you have a subleasing clause in there. Now, it may depend if the contract is, if the landlord can withhold his consent or, so, so, so that's where you have to review the contract, okay? Or here's another thing you may also look at, new purposes, okay? I was talking with a client today and I said, well, have you thought about any new purposes, things that are listed as essential businesses under these new COVID laws that you see a lot of cities passing, states, essential business, okay? I'm not going to go into those now, but if you have this kind of value, some kind of value, you may not be able to get out of your lease, okay? Um, if you assume the risks, here's where we have our force majeure. I, if you haven't seen my video, I've got a great video on force majeure. Everybody's loving it, and it's hard to spell force M-A-J-E-U-R-E, -E, force majeure. If you assume the risk of an act of God and you, you signed a clause that says, I'm going to pay rent anyway, a smart landlord will have that in there and will say, you pay rent anyway. Okay, if you have that in there, you probably assume the risk. Not always. You may still want to have your case looked at if you have severe financial hardship. I'm sorry, I'm sweating because all these lights in here. Um, finally, let's see. So, yeah, so the court did not release the tenant. The court said, nah, you could have foresaw this. You assume the risk, you know, so forth and so on. Now, what a lot of people are doing now is loan workouts, commercial workouts. 
they're saying, well, tenant, uh, landlord, first step, go to your landlord. Hey, are you guys doing this? I mean, you're helping me out. We're struggling. We're all struggling. You know, when the tide goes down, it goes down for everybody. When the tide goes up, usually helps a lot of people, okay? Working it out, seeing if your landlord will work on it. If they won't, then you need to maybe look at some more forceful options, okay? And again, this is going to be a limited frustration of purpose doctrine, but it is on the books. I'm going to read you a quote in a second here. Um, evictions now, we're, check your city and your county, your state. A lot of cities, counties, states are now restricting the ability to evict, saying if a tenant is late, commercial or residential, they're doing this in Fresno now, my hometown, my alma, not my hometown, my college alma mater, FSU, go Bulldogs. Um, they're restricting the, the residential and commercial um, evictions, okay? So look, look in and see if that may be a remedy for you. There are also some cities and counties, states offering loans. Check that out. So check out your jurisdiction. Are there any loans available? For example, I just noticed in Fresno, they have, what do they call it? The Save the Small Business Act, I believe it's called. Interest-free loans. If you stay in business for a year, you do not have to pay the loan back. Okay, so that's pretty nice. So check the rules. See what options are available out there. If you need a contract review and you just say, I've got nothing else to look at. Is there anything possible? Did the landlord breach the contract? Is there anything I can look at? You can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. So I hope this has been helpful. It's a general legal overview here, some good contract language, some good understanding of defenses, and how something like this might work out in real life, okay? So again, you can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. Be nice to each other. Don't hoard at the grocery store. So have fun. Be safe. We're going to get through this. We are going to get through this, people. Stay positive. Keep your heads up. The doctrines of impossibility, commercial impracticability, or, as the Uniform Commercial Code knows it, excuse by failure of presupposed conditions, comprise unclimbed peaks of contract doctrine. Clearly, all of the famous early and mid-20th century mountaineers, Corbin, Williston, and Farnsworth, and many lesser men, have made attempts on this topic, but none has succeeded in conquering the very summit. In spite of attempts by all the contract buffs, and even in the face of eloquent and persuasive general statements, it remains impossible to predict with accuracy how the law will apply to a variety of relatively common cases. Both the cases and the code commentary are full of weasel words such as severe shortage, market increase, basic assumptions, and force majeure.